When I first started uh, um, dipping my toe into uh, politics, I really came in as a, as a liberal, as a, as a Democrat and a liberal, and a, a scholar and a gentleman. <laughs> but I actually had no idea. I really thought that the left was the same as that. I didn't realize what it, the difference between a radical and a liberal. And it was uh, an education for me when, when uh, I first heard Robert speak, and I, for, uh, for, as a good liberal, I, I thought, wow, you know, he's really saying what I, what I feel, and, and it all, he, he has a way of articulating things. And so then, but when we, when we actually sat down and talked, I realized that I didn't really have politics. What I had was kind of a leftover hippie thing that was all about, can't we all just get along? If, my, my songwriting has completely changed as a result of it. My ability to be a humanitarian has really changed as well, to really empathize with those who are suffering as a direct result of uh, first world consumption and lifestyle. So I'd love to introduce him to you here tonight. Please welcome Robert Jensen. Hi. It won't take long for you to figure out how the, in the genetic role of the dice, how the traits got distributed. Eliza has a, a, an intuitive, artistic, creative bent and, and an amazing voice uh, and is a, a warm, generous, and compassionate person. And I was given a, an unusual talent to alienate, alienate and annoy virtually everybody. <laughs> so the way this is really gonna work is she'll sort of rope you in and then I'll stand up and alienate and annoy you for a while until it looks like people are starting to head for the doors and then we'll rush back uh, with Eliza. And I thought I would introduce all of this by suggesting that whenever we approach uh, an idea, a project, uh, an institution, if somebody brings to us a new idea, we should ask basically two questions. One, is it compatible with justice? And number two, is it compatible with sustainability? These are the two, I think, overarching questions we have to ask ourselves today to focus on justice and sustainability. We know we live in a profoundly unjust world. UN statistics tell us that half the world's population, that's more than three billion people on this planet today, half the world's population lives on less than $2 a day. A quarter of the world's population lives on less than a dollar a day. Half of the world is in abject poverty as we sit here tonight. We know that is unjust. We know that is fundamentally at odds with every philosophical and theological system that is represented here tonight. Let me suggest there are really three E's, the three E's that we need to keep talking to people about. Empire, economics, and ecology. Right? Empire, we know that the United States for most of its history, but it's certainly in the 20th century in the post-World War II era, has projected itself in the world as an imperial power. And we know that is fundamentally inconsistent with justice and sustainability. We know that when the U.S. goes abroad, it is not attempting to secure the peace for anyone else or for the American people. We know it's not trying to bring democracy to the world. We know that U.S. foreign policy, historically and today, has been aimed at deepening and extending American domination, especially in the most crucial sectors of the world, places like the Middle East and Central Asia, where our focus is these days, which hold, of course, the vast majority of the energy reserves of the planet. So we have to keep focused on empire, not just on a particular war and why it might be wrong, not just the invasion and occupation of Afghanistan or Iraq, but the whole policy, the whole imperial posture of the United States has taken. That's one place to focus our attention. The second is economics, because I think it's quite clear that contemporary capitalism, especially the very predatory form of capitalism we see, is inconsistent with justice and sustainability. There's simply no way to make it work. I think we have to come to terms with the fact that not just the current gang of thieves, thieves and thugs in Washington and Wall Street but it is the system, again, that we need to look at. And I think we, if we do look at it, we realize that capitalism is fundamentally inhuman. That is, it's based on values that, again, are counter to the, the philosophical underpinnings that we all would accept. And it's fundamentally anti-democratic. Capitalism is whatever else it is, in practice, is a wealth-concentrating system. It always has been and it always will be. 
And when you concentrate wealth, you concentrate power. There's never been a society in which there was concentrated wealth without concentrated power. And finally, of course, all of this in an ecological framework that is dire. And here I think we need to go beyond thinking of just environmental issues. You know, for a long time we've had that framework of environmental issues, clean water, clean air, little things that we thought we could attack. And, and a lot of work has been done, very good work often, around those environmental issues. But we have to see this as the fundamental unraveling of the ecosystem itself. Right? And I think there's no way to imagine a just and sustainable world with empire and capitalist economics and any reverence for the health of the ecosystem, those are just not gonna go forward together.